Hi, my name is Rajat and I am pro presenting a project named Plasma Propulsion Engine. Uh, its abbreviation is like Electroplasma Thermodynamics Thrusters. Uh, basically, it is a spacecraft engine. Uh, so, along with my teammates named uh, Nishchal and Nikathara, they will also be uh, in, alongside with me in this project. Uh, and our project ID is Project Gen 28. Uh, let's go through these slides. Uh, so first, uh, we have our abstract, uh, which we'll see now. Uh, it is just that uh, we, uh, with the current technology, uh, which we have with the chemical engines, it takes a longer time that uh, to reach like around Mars, which will take around two years or three years somewhere with the farthest approach and with the nearest approach of uh, 12 months to six months or in between in that range. And the journey is, uh, very fragile and the aircraft's weight and the structural support will also be uh, very uh, like not supportive but they have somehow managed to get to along achieve that speed and plasma rockets on the other hand provide a lot of thrust and provide a lot of speed uh, which, whichever uh, like suitable for longer distance travels in the space and these uh, engines plasma engines expand a, a lot of like provide a, a like a long range of uh, speed uh, eventually we can gradually achieve uh, like larger speeds and chemical engines uh, as of now achieve around 24 kilometers per second uh, in space that too uh, the applying the catapult uh, principle by orbiting around the earth but plasma engine on the other hand can directly uh, achieve that speed without any kind of catapult or any principle being applied to that one to achieve uh, that kind of speed. So plasmas, uh, plasma engine like PP engines provide uh, like a range of 100 to 200 kilometers per second speed. Uh, if we try to burn it for a longer time, then we can achieve a lot of speed. They are larger than 200 kilometers per second. So our main objectives uh, would be like, we will first thing is study the plasmic properties. Uh, what is uh, the main basic principle, why we use plasma as a fuel. And the next thing is to achieve the plasma, which will obviously be using uh, air because we are in the earth conditions uh, and we can use a closed chamber in space and we can use inert gases. And second thing is we'll study about the confinement of plasma means um, basically we, uh, try to see that how do we achieve the thrust uh, with this thing and one more thing is uh, we will compare, compare some practical models and we will also study about the efficiency and how we do we achieve higher velocities with PPE alongside with chemical engines and let's go with the methodology and uh, plasma is basically a fourth state of matter and we also call it as it is basically a gas we call it as uh, electrically neutral gas in scientific terms uh, it, there is a reason why we call it because uh, plasma contains equal number of positive ions and equal number of negative ions so these add up to zero uh, like charge electric charge or magnetic field yeah, if you compare so these these will add up to all the forces will be added up to zero so that's why we call it as electrically neutral gas so we can whenever you uh, like if you want to play around with it you can play it uh, with electrical and magnetic field so this is what happens uh, in celestial bodies like stars so they all are made up of uh, plasma in the core section so their over uh, their temperature is also very high but we will be using cold plasma in this project. Uh, anyhow, we can use hot plasma also. That is, uh, that won't be an issue if our magnetic fields are very strong. So first thing is, uh, plasma uh, will be injected into a uh, helical antenna structure. Uh, what this happens is there will be two electrodes. At an instance, if you consider whenever you are passing uh, electricity between two electrodes, so one will be, uh, considering the AC current, alternative current, one electrode will be uh, positive and one electrode will be negative at some point of time. Uh, we are not we are varying this thing. First, we will compare. So what happens is uh, the uh, the air around the electrodes will be ionized due to the high voltages which we are supplying. So our uh, operational voltage would be around fifteen thousand uh, 
15,000 volts. We can also uh, make it uh, possible with uh, 7,000 volts and 2,000 volts considering uh, the fuel which you are using to generate the plasma. If we consider inert gases, that will be around 2,000 to 4,000 volts. And if we consider air, so it will vary around 7 to 12,000 volts. And plasma, uh, once the plasma is being generated, whenever we couple this AC current, uh, whenever we pull and push uh, these ions uh, out of the gas, which is present around these electrodes, there will be electrically neutral gas being generated. So this gas, uh, we will pull it with the help of a halo tube. Uh, I will just show the structure and then we can get a clear idea on this one. So next is the components which we use. As I mentioned, we are using copper halo tubes because uh, it is a good conductor of electricity and heat. So there will be thick copper wires because we are using around 15,000 kV volts. There will be neon sign transformer, which output would be around 15 kV, 30 milliamps and variac uh, will be using. That is a variable auto transformer, which will be used to control this neon sign transformer. We just don't want 15,000 volts directly flowing into our uh, structure. So we can control it by varying the voltage. So this is one commercial uh, workflow of how this uh, plasma propulsion engine is going to work. So this is a basic layout. First thing is uh, we will provide the uh, supply to the electrodes. Consider this ionization phase uh, where we do the uh, coupling of this thing. Uh, so the first thing is plasma source antenna is the main uh, electrode where we push in the gas and due to high voltage uh, like high voltage around this air section we will get a cold plasma so considering uh, ac current so for instance this will be positive and there is another uh, chamber where we will be using as a uh, electrode which will also be generating negative so these opposite charges attract each other and pull it uh, inside the halo chamber that's why we are using halo chamber so this happens with the energization phase so all this will be controlled uh, in the section of electromagnetic field so once this plasma is being uh, generated then we can push it out to get the thrust so uh, there are two methods first method is like uh, we can directly energize this thing and push it and one more thing is we can apply another magnetic uh, fielding phase so what we'll try to do is confine the plasma means converge the plasma into a ball of uh, beam. So then we can uh, extract that uh, energy which is being stored there, extract that plasma uh, slowly uh, with the help of electromagnetic uh, exhaust chambers. So we'll see what that is. You can see the uh, blue wave kind of structure that is where the plasma is being converged with the help of magnetic field and these magnetic field lines with the exhaust where uh, we will converge the beam structure we, you can see here the beam kind of structure is being confinement is being done so this will be pulled out with the help of uh, the magnetic field so we can just see this short outcome which we have we can just see that this is a variable auto transformer yeah this is the electrode and this is another electrode the air around this will be ionized so if this is positive and this is negative for instance this will attract each other each other and here the magnet because of the magnetic field being attracted this whole air will be pulled out you can see the difference here so that this whole tissue will be blown off with the help of cold plasma there is being no air being supplied here. This is a opaque structure. You can see the variation. So this is one outcome. Let's come back to uh, societal relevance. Uh, to achieve uh, the greater distances uh, to cross a, to cross a lot of uh, interplanetary missions or to more like travel to one celestial object like Mars, consider the Mars. So the, uh, we have to do it uh, within a short lifespan of a human being, like consider 70 to 80 years is the maximum lifespan period of a human. We have to do it inside that phase. So that is where the challenges lie uh, do for the interplanetary space missions. So we are cutting down uh, that uh, one aspect of uh, space travel with the help of this engine. And there is a lot of fuel available because we use gas. We, uh, if you consider clusters like galaxy or uh, nebulas, so there is a lot of gas being traveled in the outside space. We can use that gas to generate plasma. So there is no uh, like shortage of fuel in uh, uh, space 
or the, if we use this PPE. Since the chemical engines uh, use oxygen to burn, uh, we need oxygen as a gas and also we need hydrogen. There is a specific fuel range which we use uh, for the chemical engines and those all fuel should be carried from Earth itself. So there is no refueling kind of thing can be done in the space for chemical engines. So we are cutting down these major two aspects with the help of the PP engines. So these engines will boost our capability to travel the farthest in the space and explore a lot. And th it is not like a one way trip. We can make it as a round trip. Uh, but what happens with the chemical engines? Why uh, people don't travel uh, with the chemical engines in the farthest in the space is the reason why uh, there is no fuel availability with the help of chemical engines. So expected outcome uh, will be uh, what we try to do here is achieve the thrust, uh, which will push our vehicle forward. That's what we did basically here. And this simple concept will achieve, uh, like help us to achieve a lot of uh, distances to be covered in deep space uh, with the average lifespan of a human being within that range. So that's what uh, we are trying to do here. And one more uh, fact which I want to tell here is that uh, according to a study when uh, the space travels were made during Apollo missions in 2013, uh, there is a fact which comes out. You would, you would be dosed with a radiation of equivalent of a whole body CT scan for up to every five to six days, increasing your lifetime risk of cancer. So this what happens in space also whenever you travel at low speeds a lot of radiation is being put on to you uh, uh, If you are present in the spacecraft a lot of radiation will be put on to you with a uh, uh, Radiations coming from the Sun or a star or any nebula nearby. So with a larger speed we can uh, like uh, What we can do is we can uh, dodge that radiation uh, So the effect of the radiation will be low so feature scope is like we can make improvements with the ionization phase and uh, using the inert gases uh, to uh, like create the gap plasma. And so obviously there will be a lot of being thrust being generated and PP is uh, specifically designed to achieve longer range interplanetary space travel missions. And these are my some of the references. And this is the commercialization and target users we'll discuss about this uh, because this is the main phase uh, where the business ideation will start so our major primary uh, customers would be the government space agencies and the private sectors uh, because a lot of R&D is being put in and the product is ready from our side so the main uh, maneuverability which is being uh, provided will be by our side because we are providing engines which are very efficient so this uh, can be put into satellites also so uh, government agencies can directly use these engines and not to put a lot of R&D uh, improving that uh, in the chemical engines. So PP can also be used in drones which are being provided in the mass uh, by NASA. Uh, like we can power, uh, like we can power those drones and we can also power those robots uh, on Mars. So this is uh, what I had to present to you guys about my project. Um, it is much of a concise thing we uh, and anyhow it is a, a lot of discussion which can be initiated from this project uh, we can do that uh, if we have a uh, time limitation if we don't have some time limitation uh, that's it for all now uh, i would like to end this presentation.